Hello and welcome to an exciting new video about Stoicism. We were going over the Moral Letters by Lucius and Aeus Seneca, and I talked last time about the start of Letter 76, and then I decided today to continue with Letter 76, because it is rather a long letter, uh, and there is more to say about it. Now, I hope you'll forgive me, because what we'll talk about today is a very central concept in Stoicism, but it is so central that I think it's not bad to continue to think about it and to repeat thinking about it once in a while. So, I really love the way Seneca, the, the, the great rhetorical writer, he's, he's, a, he's a strong writer, the way he expresses this in about one page of text. Each thing is so constituted as to have its own excellence. <clears throat> Fertility commends the vine, flavor the vintage, swiftness the stag. About a mule, you ask how strong its back is, for the only function of a mule is to carry burdens. In a dog, the chief quality is keenness of scent, if it is to track the game, speed of foot, if it is to chase the game down, and boldness, if it is to dart in and harry. In each its best quality ought to be that for which it is born and by which it is assessed. What then is the distinctive property of a human being? Reason. It is by reason that the human surpasses animals and is second to the gods. Therefore, perfected reason is the human's distinctive excellence. Everything else is shared with animals and plants. The human is strong. So are lions. He is beautiful. So are peacocks. He is swift. So are horses. I'm not remarking that he is surpassed in all these attributes. My inquiry is not what attribute is greatest in humans, but what it is that is particular to humans. The human has a body. So do trees. He has the capacity for impulse and voluntary movement. So do beasts and worms too. He has a voice. But how much louder is the barking of dogs? How much higher the city of the eagle? Sorry, I'm so sorry, the city, the cry. How much higher the cry of the eagle? How much deeper the bellow of bulls? How much sweeter and more melodious the trilling of the lark? What is special about a human being? Reason. When that is set straight and made complete, it achieves the blissful fulfillment of human nature. Therefore, if each thing is worthy of praise and arrives at the culmination of its own nature when it perfects its own particular good, and if the particular good for a human is reason, then if a person perfects his reason, he is worthy of praise and has attained the culmination of his own nature. This perfected reason is called virtue, and is also the same as the honorable. Hence, the one thing that belongs solely to the human is the sole good of the human, for we are now asking not what the good is, but what the human good is. If nothing but reason belongs solely to the human, this will be his sole good. But this good must be weighed in with all other attributes. If anyone proves to be bad, he will be blamed. If good, he will be approved. Hence, that by which a human being is approved and blamed is his primary and only distinctive attribute. So, we have talked here about reason. Remember how important reason is in Stoicism. The Stoics in their Stoic physics believe that the entire universe is a massive rational being called the Logos. And the Logos is a rational being. It reasons. It, it, it does things, it creates, right? Then there is human beings. And human beings have reason too. More so than animals. Simpler life forms. Human beings have reason, so the Stoics say. And that reason is vital to us. Because that reason allows us to command our lives. Take charge over our lives by taking charge over our feelings. Stoics do not claim that you cannot have feelings. No Stoic ever wrote that. But Stoics do say sometimes feelings get in the way of your 
mental health. That's not a term they use, that's a modern term. But your well-being, your ability to lead a good and fulfilling life can be hampered by specific feelings. Specifically, the passions, the negative passions. Anger, jealousy, hatred, bad emotions. Now, sometimes it's very good to be angry about something because some things deserve to be angry about. But many times in life, we get very angry about things that are not worth getting angry about. We get upset about things that are not worth being upset about, or we feel sad about things that really are not worth feeling sad about. Forgive the standard example that I've used many times now, but it's often small things. Someone cuts you off in traffic. Someone says something unpleasant about you. It's a very small thing. If you allow yourself to get very upset and angry about that, that may ruin an hour of your day, maybe a whole day. It certainly used to for me. I would get angry about something that someone had said or, or someone had done, and it would ruin a whole day for me. I'd be stewing about it. I'm not unique in this regard. A lot of people have that. It kind of keeps going on in your brain. You keep going. And that's difficult because it makes your life very unpleasant. And Stoics say, well, then don't have your life be unpleasant. Do you want this? The solution is simple. Take charge of your life. Take charge of your mental life. Think. Reason. Someone cuts you off in traffic. This would not happen to a traditional ancient Stoic because there was no traffic and they did not drive any cars. But there would be other things that they would find upsetting that were upsetting in their life. Of course, those things happen too. Because throughout human history there have been upsetting things in life. This is just the way life works. So the Stoic said, then here's what you do. Reason! Use that specific power that you as a human being have and that we think a dog does not have or a cat does not have or a goldfish does not have. Take a step back and ask yourself, is this something that is worth getting angry about? If it is, well, then you should be angry. But if not, then don't. You have that power. At any point in time, I'm paraphrasing Marcus Aurelius here, at any point in time, you can revoke the power of your feelings. He goes, okay, well, I shouldn't be angry about this. You know what? I shouldn't be sad about this. What's the point? And then you move forward. And you do that by commanding your reason. Use your reason. And using your reason is very easy when you're calm. Nobody struggles with that because then you're calm. The difficulty in using your reason is using it when you're not calm. When something has happened that has frustrated you or angered you or made you sad or made you upset. Because at that point you're upset. Your heart is racing. You have all these emotions and feelings. That's the problem. But at that point you need your reason the most. And you take a deep breath. It's remarkable what a, what, how big an effect taking a deep breath can have because it forces you to slow down, interrupt that pattern of thought. Okay, that guy just cut me off in traffic. Is this really worth getting upset about? No one got hurt, there was no accident. Okay, let it go. Let it go. This is hard. It's difficult for people. But the more you practice it, the easier it gets, just like with any other skill that you practice. And then you do that thing. And then you will find your life becomes easier and easier. Central tenet in Stoicism. Use your reason. Okay. I think I've made that point clear. I hope so. Let me know what you think. Let me know what you think about the use of reason in everyday life. Has it made your life easier? It has for me. 
you struggle with specific things and how to apply this. I can always do a video about that. That's what I have. I hope this was useful. I'm glad to see you later. Bye.